Hello everybody, it's Ocelot, and today's guide is going to be how to get the Bloodhound's Fang early and OP. I'm going to show you how to get it to plus 10 as early as possible. Here's my save. In about an hour and 20 minutes, I was able to get everything I needed to start the game off overpowered. Let's take a look at my equipment. I have a plus 10 Bloodhound's Fang. I have Golden Vow on a dagger. I have the White Mask, the Axe Talisman, Ritual Sword Talisman, dagger talisman all talismans that synergize with each other i have the green spill tier strength and dexterity tier spike crack tier five crack pots one ritual pot the academy key both halves of the deck disc medallion and i have completed vare's quest i have the sleep pot recipe i have the spirit calling bell i'm at level 47 with 30 vigor which gives me almost a thousand HP. We have Blood Flame Blade as a buff and Flame Grant Me Strength. I'm going to equip the bow and I'm going to show you that you also have access to the bird farm. Now I don't personally use this but if you haven't seen my guide before I will go ahead and give you a quick rundown. You're going to want to shoot the bird. As the bird falls off the ledge you want to rest at the side of grace and rinse and repeat as many times as necessary. If you have the gold scarab or and or you have a gold pickle foul foot, you can use both to get over 50% extra runes. I chose the prophet as my starting class with the golden seed keepsake. Feel free to choose any class you'd like. Just keep in mind your stats might differ towards the end when you get to level 47 or 50 as I'll show you later on. I am going to speed up most of the running however I will have pop-ups on screen letting you know to pick up important items. I will also slow it down when we are picking up important items and or leveling up and leveling up our weapon. Now I don't pick up all graces along the route I encourage you to pick up as many graces as possible, but for sure pick up all the graces that I touch. So we'll be coming up on our first grace, which for this guide we will not need. I do encourage you to pick it up. After we go up this lift, there will be a grace that will be necessary for this run. So go ahead and make sure to grab that grace. We're going to be running towards the Church of Ella. We'll pick up that grace. I'm going to stop it. I will slow it down once we get to the root resin. You'll be wanting to pick up root resin and blood rose so you can craft blood grease. I will also slow it down when we get to our first batch of Trina's lilies as you'll want to pick up Trina's lilies and mushrooms to craft the sleep pots. If you miss these kukri on the cart, don't worry about it. There will be a merchant that sells kukri just in case you need any. We will be needing at least a couple on this run. We'll be coming up on the gate front grace and we'll be getting torrent for faster travel. You need to the foot. Then it said summon me. Ah, I bequeath. While you are at this grace, go ahead and allocate the golden seed for an extra flask charge. I changed the time to the daytime so it's easier for you to see. Head into the gate front ruins, pick up the map, and there's a cellar that you're going to be heading into for the whetstone knife. This allows you to apply ashes of war at any site of grace. So next we're going to ride to the Ag Heel Lake North side of Grace. We're going to touch it, but we're going to warp back to the gate front side of Grace and head north. As we are heading north, we're going to come across the first batch of mushrooms. The mushrooms spawn pretty much all over the route. 
So just look on the ground as you're running around the landscape for mushrooms. I'm not going to point them all out. Just that first set. Here we're coming up with the golden seed. Go ahead and pick up all the golden seeds on the route as well. We're going to stop here at the side of Grace. There's going to be a stone sword key. You're going to want to pick that up. Touch the Grace. And then we're going to head east towards the strength tier. After we pick up the strength tier, you're going to want to continue east and pick up Golden Vow. It's going to be on a knight, which you'll have to kill. If you do not feel like you're ready to kill this knight yet, you can always come back after we level up. So let's continue to head east. We're going to go across the Saints Bridge. There is a side of grace you can pick up if you'd like before it. On the other side of the bridge, there's going to be a merchant. You're going to need 600 runes to buy a cracked pot from the merchant. Oh. Here is a customer. Oh, I'm afraid of it. After buying the pot from the merchant, go ahead and continue to head southeast. We're going to come across our first batch of Trina's lilies. Go ahead and pick those up. Then we're going to drop off the cliff and continue to head south. And we're going to be picking up the Fever's cookbook and some golden runes in the cemetery. Next, we're going to be heading east towards the Third Church of America. We'll be picking up the Sacred Tear and the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Make sure to grab this grace as it's going to be a focal point that we'll be returning to multiple times. After grabbing the grace, we'll be heading southwest into Mistwood. We'll be stopping at the Minor Erd Tree. There are a couple of tears we'll be picking up. The green spill tier, which enhances stamina, and the spike crack tier, which enhances charged heavy attacks. They both last three minutes in the Flask of Wondrous Physic. Make sure you pass near the Mistwood Ruins. You'll hear a wolf howling. That's going to be key as we need to hear that howling so we can recruit Blythe to help us out against the fight against Darawil once we are ready to acquire the Bloodhound's Fang. Now we're heading into Fort Height and I'm going to slow the whole thing down. There's Blood Rose here that you can farm. There's one seed. There is the Blood Grease Cookbook. And there's also the first half of the Dectus Medallion. grab the first half of the Dectus medallion, go ahead and warp over to the Church of Ele. There's a few things we'll be picking up there. Namely, we'll be picking up three cracked pots and the crafting kit, but Ronnie will also appear and we can go ahead and pick up the Spirit Calling Bell this and time, our first summon, the, the Lone Wolf. To the summon them the spirits now it is that For I doubt we shall how long will it be for you will tower? need 1200 runes to buy the three cracked pots and the crafting kit so go ahead and sell the you one rune that, that you have if you don't have that car. rune you can sell enough to get to 1200 don't forget to talk to them about oh, the howling that way you can so use the finger snap yourself. gesture to call down Blythe after you're done with calling let's warp to the first step Goodbye. we'll be dropping off to the south side to pick up a gold pickled foul foot.
Next, we are going to warp to the Ag Hill Lake north site of Grace, and we are going to head south. We are going to be picking up a Somber 1, a Gold Pickle Foulfoot, and we are going to head into the Mistwood Ruins. Go ahead and follow me on screen. After you pick up the Gold Pickle Foulfoot, head south and slightly southeast. There's going to be a Spirit Spring that you can jump on. Once you jump onto that Spirit Spring, you're going to want to head northeast. We're going to talk to Blythe about Darywill. Once we do that, he's going to be available to help us out on the fight. So go ahead and use the finger snap gesture that you got from Kali. Who Kali sent you? Hmm. The name's Blood. He fled, so come tell me if I can offer you. Dar and in need of While we are here, there is a golden rune we can pick up. There is also Trina's lilies, which we will pick up last because there's a sleeping bear. Let's go into the cellar and pick up a talisman that will be useful. It is the Axe Talisman. It gives us 10% extra damage to our charged heavies. So once we are done here, let's head west back to the Spirit Spring. We're going to jump on it and continue to head west, which is slightly also southwest. We're going to be picking up the Ag Hill Lake south side of Grace. We're going to warp here later once we are ready to pick up the Bloodhound Fang. Next, we're heading south into the Weeping Peninsula. The main thing we are going to want here is the Morning Star. We'll also want this Stone Sword key on the bridge. And we're going to pick up Sacred Tears and a Golden Seed. We'll also be picking up a Crack Pot. And the Coming Up Merchant sells Kukri if you weren't able to pick up any. On this overturn cart will be the Morning Star. And if you continue down the road, you'll run into the Merchant. After buying the pot, we're heading southwest to pick up a golden seed, but we're going to warp right back to the grace right next to the merchant, and then head west into Weeping Peninsula. We're going to head west around the hill that is to our north. On the hill to our north side, there is a sacred tier. After that, picking that up, we're going to head slightly northwest. We're going to do a drop onto a spirit spring, but then jump right back on top of it. Just go ahead and follow me on screen. It's 100% safe. Just make sure to delay your second jump. Continue going slightly northwest. We're going to be picking up another sacred tier at the coming up church. There's also blood grease just outside of the church. Once we are done here, we're going to head slightly southwest for our last sacred tier in Weeping Peninsula. After picking up our last tier, we're going to warp to Stormhill Shack and we're going to head north. We're going to bypass Stormvale Castle and we're heading straight into the Urnia of the Lakes. Just follow me on screen.
this merchant, you can purchase a lantern. It is completely optional, but I do recommend it. It costs 1800 runes. Let's head north towards Laskyar Ruins. There is a grace that we want to pick up right by Laskyar Ruins. After picking up this grace, you want to continue to head north. We're going to start Raya's quest. So we're going to stop at the next gazebo. Hello, hello, it's Rada. My mistress, but I was a could I ask that thug only if you've... Oh, what a bless a thug, please. After talking to Raya, let's head west. Before we buy her necklace from Blackguard, we're going to stop here and grab the dexterity knock crystal tier. Then we're going to head north and we'll see Blackguard Shack just ahead. We're going to stop there and purchase Raya's necklace, but we are not going to return it to her just yet. We're going to head northwest further into Liernia and pick up a few more things before we return the necklace. Let's go ahead and head northwest. We're going to be picking up fallen ruins on the lake side of Grace. After stopping here and touching the grace, we're going to continue to head northwest. Our next objective is to pick up Blood Flame Blade. Now that we have Blood Flame Blade acquired, let's head north. We're going to be picking up the Academy Key. Just follow my character exactly on screen. You're going to want to crouch on this rock and walk down slowly. Pick up the Academy Key and then warp to the Laskyar Ruins side of Grace. You're going to head north and give Raya her necklace back. She in turn is going to give you the Volcano Manor Letter of Introduction. Oh, After that, I we're going to head back south to Laskar Ruins please. and go into the teleporter. So after grabbing the grace, we're going to go through the academy gate, but immediately we're going to exit through the other gate and go on to Bellum Highway. Let's pick up the grace right outside of this next gate, and we're going to drop off to the east side of the cliff. There's going to be a spirit spring, so don't worry about taking fall damage. As long as you land on the spirit spring, you will not take any damage. I went ahead and played this at normal speed so you can follow me exactly on screen. After safely landing on the spirit spring, head west. On this chair, there's going to be a somber three. You're going to head to the third church of America and rest at the grace. You're going to be taking to the round table by, Mel by Melina. Go ahead and take advantage of this and buy a dagger from the twin maiden husks. We are going to apply the golden vow ash of war to this dagger in the future. After buying the dagger, warp back to the third church of America. You're going to want to turn the time into nighttime. The next thing we're going to do is take the teleporter just northeast of the church. This will take you to North Dragon Barrow. 
Go ahead and follow the road south. Pick up the next upcoming grace. You don't need to rest there. Just go ahead and touch it. Follow me on screen as I head east and then south. The next thing I'm going to do is do the Knight's Cavalry Cheese. I went ahead and slowed it down so you could follow me on screen. So with the Knight's Cavalry down, let's continue across the bridge south. We're going to use a Spirit Spring and jump into the Lenny's Rise. This is important and required. We are going to need an extra Memory Stone and there's one in this chest for free. So let's grab the Memory Stone, jump back down to the Spirit Spring and then we're going to head west towards Fort Ferris. So the next thing I'm going to do is kill Elder Dragon Grail. I'm also going to use most of the runes, but keep 20,000 runes to upgrade the Bloodhound's Fang. You don't need that many. I believe it only costs around nine to 10,000 to upgrade it to plus six. So let's go ahead and equip the Blood Grease and equip the Gold Pickle Foulfoot. I always craft two more Blood Grease, so I have at least four. You only need two or three though. I'm going to speed up the video in the, in the process of killing Grail though. It takes around 4 minutes or so. What you want to do is on your last hit, you want to pop the Gold Pick Foul Foot and get the extra rune boost. And as the dragon dies, pop the Gold Pick Foul Foot, you'll get the extra rune boost. If you want, you can also hold off on killing the dragon and cheese in the Knight's Cavalry until you went into Fort Ferris. I did everything before Fort Ferris. I'm going to rest at the Grace and level up. You're going to want to put 14 into Vigor, 4 into Endurance, 7 into Strength, and 7 into Dexterity. I only put 13 into Vigor and I end up carrying around 20,000 runes on my character. But you can go ahead and put 14 and you'll still have enough to level up the Blood Town's Fang to plus 6. You now have both halves of the Dectus Medallion. Let's go ahead and warp over to Ag Hill Lake South Side of Grace. Rest at the Grace and use your Golden Seeds and Sacred Tears. You're also going to want to apply the Golden Vow Ash of War to the dagger that you bought from the Twin Maiden Husk. Go ahead and equip your dagger. Make sure you have your spear equipped. And next, you're going to head south, slightly west of the road that goes into Weeping Peninsula. You're going to head up the hill to the Evergel and pick up your weapon, the Bloodhound's Fang. Darawell. Rotting in a cell is no true justice. No. This is where it ends for you. Congratulations, you now have the Bloodhound's Fang. Make sure after the fight that you talk to Blythe. He's going to give you a somber too. We're going to need that because we didn't pick one up. How to work for it, don't say I'm not. After acquiring the somber two oh, from Blythe, we're going to warp sure to, to the east Raya Lucaria Gate. We're going to be heading northeast on Bellum Highway towards the Dectis Lift. 
We're going to take the lift, talk to Raya, and our first stop in Altis is actually going to be at Volcano Manor. So talk to Lady Tanith and she is going to give you the drawing room key. You're going to want to take the first room on the right down the hallway. That is going to take you to the prison town church side of grace. So after picking up this somber five, you're going to want to face northwest. You're going to see boxes near a hanging cage. This is why I asked you to make sure you have kukri. I miss a couple times, but you want to throw a kukri at the boxes. That's going to get the enemy on the stairs to go towards the noise. You can easily walk behind the enemy, bring down the bridge. Once you bring down the bridge, we're going to warp back to the Third Church of America, and we're going to make another trip into Kaled. I want to slow it down right here so you could see me hit this scarab with the kukri. This scarab contains the last somber stone we need, which is the somber four. So go ahead and get the somber four, and you're going to head southwest towards Fort Gale. You can pick up the grace if you'd like. I don't pick it up, but our objective is to get to the south side of Fort Gale and get flame grant me strength. That is going to be the last buff that I pick up. So after getting Flame Grant Me Strength, we are going to warp to Fort Ferrith. We're going to be picking up Somber 8 and 9. We cannot use them yet because the Somber 7 is locked behind another mini boss, which is in Volcano Manor. We will be dealing with that, not just yet though. Let's go ahead and pick up these last two somber stones that we need. And then we're going to head back to the round table and we're going to upgrade our Bloodhound's Fang to plus six. No matter how you're upset. So now that we have our Bloodhound's Fang to plus six, let's warp back to the Prison Town Church side of Grace. Let's go ahead and memorize Blood Flame Blade and Flame Grant Me Strength. Also, 
We're going to spend any runes that we have. I'm going to put it into Vigor. Also, we're going to want to put the Dexterity and Strength tier into our Physics. We're going to head towards the Church. And we're going to go after the Godskin Noble. Make sure that you craft the Sleep Pots and equip them. If you want to use Bleed Grease, you can use Bleed Grease. If you want to use Blood Flame Blade, you can use Blood Flame Blade. Either one works. You have a plus six Bloodhound's Fang. You can use nothing and it will work. So go ahead and follow me on screen and you're going to see how easy this fight is. And it's going to open up the way to the Somber Seven, which will open up the way to getting a plus nine Bloodhound's Fang. And right after that, we'll be making it a plus 10. Also, don't forget to equip the Axe Talisman. I had it in my inventory and I didn't even equip it. It would have immensely helped on the charge attacks that I do against the Godskin Noble. And as you can see, the noble just got destroyed. Let's go ahead and rest at this grace and spend the runes. I put five into vigor. I suggest you do the same. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get vigor to, to 30 and then we'll start spending in other stats. We're going to take the lift up deeper into the volcano manor. Just follow me on screen. I will slow it down though once we get to the part right before the Somber 7 and it will actually be right before another helpful talisman, the Dagger Talisman. So right about here is when I realized I didn't have the Axe Talisman equipped so I went ahead and equipped it. You don't have to do so right now. Just make sure you equip it before we fight Margit. So we're going to drop down all the way to the bottom, but we're going to head east first away from the Somber Seven. We're going to open up this doorway just in case the Albanarix kill us while we're acquiring the Somber 7. There's also a Virgin Abductor guarding it. There it is right behind the Virgin Abductor. Roll from her attack. Grab the Somber 7. Jump or roll away. We're going to rest at the Grace to de-aggro her. And I'm going to warp back to the round table to level up our Bloodhound's Fang to plus 9. One away from max level. After you level up the Bloodhound's Fang to plus 9, go ahead and warp to the Stormhill Shack site of Grace. If you haven't yet, equip the Axe Talisman because we're about to fight Margit and right after Margit we're going to fight Godric. So in about one hour playtime, I was able to get the Bloodhound's Fang to plus nine. I have Golden Vow on a dagger. I have the Axe Talisman, the Strength tier, Dexterity tier, Blood Flame Blade, and Flame Grant me Strength for buffs. So go ahead and drink your Physic. You're going to want to do Golden Vow right after, Blood Flame Blade, and then Flame Grant me Strength. That's going to be the order you're going to want to do your buffs. Drink your Blue Flask and send it.
Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins. Easy Margate. He went down with one charged attack and the first part of the weapon skill twice. Let's go ahead and talk to Gostic, have him open the gate. We're going to rest at the grace and level up. You're going to want to put one into endurance and then run straight towards Godric. And down goes Godric easily as well. If you'd like, you can go ahead and grab the grace that appears. It is not necessary. When you are ready to, warp back to the round table. You need to speak to Enya. She's in the room that was closed before you fought a Remembrance boss. After speaking to her, you're going to want to warp to the fallen ruins of the lake side of grace. And we're going to start and complete Vare's questline. So after talking to Vare, you're going to want to warp to the Grand Lift of Dectis, Site of Grace. We're going to head back into Altis Plateau. However, this time we're going to head north. We're going to make one stop before we continue on with his quest. We're going to go after Gilika for the Ritual Sword Talisman. Just follow me on screen and you're going to see how easy she goes down as well. Now that you have the Ritual Sword Talisman, right now your loadout should be the Axe Talisman and the Ritual Sword Talisman. Right now I have the Axe Talisman and the Dagger Talisman equipped, but eventually I notice it. I'm letting you know ahead of time. Equip the Axe Talisman and the Ritual Sword Talisman. We're going to stop here at the Second Church of America for a Sacred Tear. Continue on north to the Spirit Spring. And then we're going to head east and we're going to fight an NPC invader as part of as part of Vari's quest line. And Magnus gets absolutely destroyed. So go ahead and warp to the fallen ruins of the lake. We're going to go back and talk to Vare. He's going to send us on another errand. It's going to be the last one until we get the pure blood knight's medal. So let's warp to the bridge of sacrifice site of grace. That's going to be the easiest and closest spot that there's a maiden. Unfortunately, you won't be able to complete this quest line if you do this. We're going to kill Irina and we're going to interact with her body. That's going to give us the Lord of Blood's favor, which we need to return to Vare.
Before heading back to the fallen ruins of the lake, let's spend our runes. Let's put one point into Vigor, one into Endurance. Warp to the fallen ruins of the lake site of Grace. Speak to Vare. He's going to give us the Pure Blood Knight's Medal, and we can use that to warp to Mogwim Palace, which will give us an easy somber 10. With the power I've gone, but you mustn't. The meeting must. So, as soon as you're warped to Mogwen Palace, just go ahead and go up the stairs and continue following the stairs going all the way up. There's going to be one side of Grace right before Mog. That's going to be right before the Somber 10, and that is going to allow us to upgrade fully our Bloodhound's Fang to plus 10 with only fighting one Remembrance boss. And again, the Kukri is going to come into play here. I go ahead and target the Sanguine Noble, chuck a Kukri at him, head around the statue that he was praying to. There's a golden room back here. There's also a golden seed on the drop-off, but up by the statue that he was looking at, there's going to be a chest guarded by Albanarix. I just wait for them to go away or cartwheel away. Once I see that it looks somewhat safe, open the chest, grab the somber 10, and book it out of there. After grabbing the golden seed, warp back to the round table. We're going to fully upgrade the Bloodhound's now Fang to plus 10. Congratulations, you fully upgraded the Bloodhound's Fang. I was able to do it in an hour and 16 minutes. I got up to level 47 with 30 Vigor. I have Golden Vow, Ash of War, and a Dagger. Next, I'm going to show you how to Rune Farm if you'd like. We're going to warp back to Limgrave to the first step side of Grace. Drop off the south side. There's a merchant once you drop down to the west. We're going to buy a short bow and some arrows. Then we're going to warp back to Mogwen Palace, show you the rune farm, and pick up one more piece. We're going to be picking up the white mask. What you're going to want to do is aim down sights on your bow, shoot the bird. The bird is going to fall off the ledge. Make sure you hit it. So the bird's going to fall off the ledge, rest at the side of grace. You'll get the bird's runes and another bird will respawn. Now you can do this for as long as you like. Pick up unlimited runes, unlimited levels. I'm not going to do this. Of course you can use a gold pickle foul foot to boost your rune acquisition. I mainly just kill the bird or make the bird kill itself so I can go down and handle the invader without having to deal with the bird. And the invader gets demolished. You now have the white mask, which gives you 10% damage when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. It could be blood loss against an enemy or blood loss on yourself. Just to show you how overpowered you are already, we're going to go ahead and fight Radon. So warp to the Fort Ferret site of Grace. You're going to head south to the Church of the Plague. There's a sacred tier there, so go ahead and pick it up. You're going to go ahead and allocate that and also spend the runes if you farmed any runes. I have a few runes on me. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and put that all into dexterity. Also, after leveling up, I'm going to show you how to skip running to the Red Main Festival. Basically, you're going to want to jump off the south side. You want to double jump. When the camera is right above your character, that's when you want to do the second jump with Torrent. You want to make sure that you do not land on the column. Make sure your character goes all the way to the bottom. And if you look on the left side of the screen underneath your stamina bar, you'll see the Stake of America. That means you did it correctly. Choose to go to the Stake of America and you have an easy red main castle skip. As I'm finishing up this Rodan fight, I just want to thank everybody that's been commenting on my videos. Thank you for the criticism. Thank you for the praise. I'm glad everybody's been enjoying these videos. I put a post out and said I'm going to be doing two a week. This is my first one of the week. I'll try to do a short one and then a full game walkthrough. If you have any weapons or Ash War that you'd like me to showcase, let me know. I know I've gotten an Eleanor's pull blade request, so that's going to be going high on my list. Again, thank you for everybody and your support. See you soon. Bye.